Hey, it's Ross, Frank Clanny Forge. I got Cade and Penelope here. They're, uh, we're all gonna learn how to take the PTO unit off of Oliver 1650 today. So, glad you could join us. We've drained all the oil in the rear end of the tractor. So we've got the plug out right down here. There's two plugs underneath the belly. There's a plug here and a plug here. This is just a plug. This plug here actually has a suction screen for the circulating pump on the rear end. And there's a filter right here on the left side, uh, right underneath your where your feet are, behind the battery. And that filter there is for the rear end oil. While you're doing this, you gotta drain the oil anyways. This is a perfect time to go ahead and change that oil. We're gonna take this cap off. There's only four bolts here. That just pries off. There is a O-ring in here. Uh, and then we'll just take that off and get it out of the way. That'll open up our clutch area. Then we gotta take some snap rings out, pull that long shaft out, and then we'll be able to take this entire unit off. We got that cover off. I went ahead and took this off because of the weight of my lever was actually not letting it just freewheel and so I couldn't get it to turn. Once you let the, the pressure off of this, you can get to where this piece here will turn separate from this. And then you spin that around until, oh, until you can see the snap ring inside here. So there's one ear and the other one's right here. It's kind of shadowed out. Do not take this snap ring off, okay? Uh, what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this snap ring in here loose, and then you're gonna pull this entire piece off with the shaft and everything. We can go ahead and pull this out if we want. To take the PTO shaft out, you take a snap ring off right here. It, it's right down here in this groove. You just grab that with any pair of pliers or whatever. Pull that out and then you're ready to pull this. Sometimes it gets a little bit of a lip there. There we go. And so this is what a 540 shaft looks like. The 1000 is slightly longer. I do not have a dual speed and you'll be, you can tell, uh, I'm not gonna go through that, but you can tell by the splines or split splines and both sets of splines turn at a different speed. This tractor does not have dual speed. It's just got 540. If you want more information on that, you have to check out uh, Chris, I think it's Losey, Losey, I don't know. Chris Losey, the all that Oliver guy's YouTube channel. He is basically uh, the Oliver guru. So anything Oliver, he basically knows it. Um, that's kind of how I got the, the start on knowing what to do here. So if you found my channel and you're looking for information on all of her stuff, you need to go check his channel out. And I'll link that down here in the description. I don't really know him personally, but he, I did message him. He left a comment on one of his videos, and he replied back to me with a little bit of information. So I'm just going to tie into it. We'll see what happens. Um, so I'll be glad to help you, but he'll definitely be more help on an Oliver than I am. Okay, so the other thing is, if you look in the back here, I've got something going on back here. I think there's supposed to be a plastic plug. I don't know if that's part of plastic that's been melted or what's happened there, but mine's open. So that's why mine's leaking. I can tell you that for sure. But you can't really reseal it correctly unless you take the entire thing out. So that's why I'm doing this. Got these bolts out here and I realized I actually have to take this clutch pack off. So I've got the snap ring off of there. Here it is. Comes off of this shaft right here. Now this clutch pack should slide right off there, hopefully. You see there. So we'll pull that off. And then there's an oil line back here I gotta take loose. And once I get that loose, then I can pull this entire unit off.
All right, guys. Got her off there. <coughs> this stinking oil line had me bum fuzzled there for a second. I didn't realize I, had, I needed to take the clutch pack off first, but that's pretty easy to get off. Then this line comes through a hole in the casting and connects to another line with a 90, goes down to lubricate the, uh, what is that? Throw out bearing, engagement bearing, whatever you want to call it. And uh, <clears throat> you just take that loose and that lets this slip through there, but you can't, you can't leave the 90 on there because it won't fit through the opening. Here is the unit. So this is the bottom, this is the top. This is where that long shaft comes through. It goes through here and uh, engages with your clutches. And then when you engage your clutch, it makes this here turn, which it's kind of sitting on that shaft now makes that turn which in turn turns this and then you can see down in here this is where the splines are for your output shaft your output pto shaft now i am not an expert but i know i've read that there's supposed to be a plastic cap on here if you look <laughs> uh my plastic cap has been mutilated i'm not sure how that even happens I don't know if somehow or another the rear end has been that hot to melt the plastic. I can't imagine it has. Um, but again, I'm really not sure on that. Let's see if we can go ahead and get this apart. Uh, and then hopefully, this is Saturday. It's too. It's going to be too late in the day to mess with trying to get parts ordered or anything. So uh, Monday probably, I'll see what, what parts they have in stock and what i got to get ordered. I'll get all new gaskets and seals and all this stuff. And... We'll go from there. So for starters, I'm gonna go ahead and take these bolts out. And what I'm hoping is I can just lift this straight off here. I'm not sure about this bearing. I don't know if it's a press fit or if it's just kind of a slip fit. All right guys, so I got this off and this literally just slipped over the end of that. If you look here, that's one piece there. Um, I don't know if this is it seems too hard to be silicone. I think that's that plastic cap that's just been melted down. I don't understand how it would have been so hot. But anyways, that was sitting right over the top of that piece right down in there. So I got that out of the way. Got my bolts out. Got that piece off. So this is upside down. This was turned up like this. Four bolts. It's got these two dowels here, alignment dowels. And I just pried it up off there. I used something to protect your face here. You're not damaging anything and it actually came right off that bearing pretty easy i think it was actually most of the resistance was on these dials and so now uh, we're going to flip it over i believe there's a spanner nut and i don't have a spanner wrench so i'm, I'm going to see what i can do or i may have to make one or buy one i don't know yet we'll see uh, so we'll flip this over and check that out one thing i'm not sure of and I still may have to take this bearing off um, because I'm sure I'm going to have to come straight out for a bit before I can do any kind of stuff to get around this. And if you look here, the teeth of this gear would definitely interfere with the bearing or the bearing would interfere with the teeth, however you want to look at it. So I may have to take this off either way. And if I do, if I was doing this again, I'll let you know when the time comes. But if I do have to do that, I'd probably just go ahead and take this nut off and take the bearing, leave the bearing in this piece here before I took it out like it did. But now if I can leave this without having to take this nut off, then that's the way to do it for sure. So, all right, <clears throat> let's see what, see what we can get done here. We're gonna flip this puppy over. All right, so now we're looking at the rear of it again. So this is what we need to get out. This piece here, you can see the splines down in there. That there is all one piece, to the best of my knowledge. Um, there's a snap ring right here. You can kind of see it here. And I believe that snap ring is actually what the bearing on your output shaft hits against. Whenever you slide it in, that's what it's hitting. That snap ring is not really holding anything. Uh, obviously, we can't come out this way. And I believe the spanner nut will actually fit inside this snap ring so you don't have to take it out. Um, so the spanner nut 
is actually it's got these four notches in it and so a tool basically would look like some, like some kind of a socket type thing um, with four prongs sticking off of it that, that would fit in there that's the right diameter i don't have that i'm gonna see if how, how tight that is how hard it is to get it off there um, i may have to get a tool or i may have to make one we'll see all right guys the spanner nut is moving i'm just using basically a punch and a hammer to drive it around um it's not buggering it up too bad i don't think uh <clears throat> one thing i want to know is this boogered up spot on the spanner nut was right here in this notch of this shaft and it's just under flush because i'm going to try to put it back in the same spot that i got it from because i don't know the correct procedure for how tight it needs to be all right, so while it's turned like this, I went ahead and tapped down on this with just the butt of my hammer so, I don't, so I'm not damaging anything here. She came out. Yep, once it came out enough, that shaft moves enough to go right around this bearing here. There's actually an O-ring right here. Obviously, there's a tapered bearing. There's the, the cone or the, yeah, the cone there. There's the cup. The bearing is perfectly fine, so I'm not even going to mess with changing the bearing. Um, I'm going to set this for now. I don't want to ding it, ding that bearing on anything. So we're going to lean that up there. All right, guys. So what I've determined is I'm going to have to take this snap ring out that I was talking about earlier in order to get this seal out. There's an O-ring right here. That's what actually seals on the outside of the output shaft bearing. Your big lip seal here that's the main seal honestly actually and then our o-ring right here that's basically sealing uh, between the spanner nut and this shaft here all right so we got that snap ring out of there it's not too bad it's a little bit of a pain just because there's the snap ring groove that it's in then there's the o-ring groove and then there's this snap ring groove so you got to get it through all all three of those grooves but it's not the end of the world, for sure. So, now we're going to see if we can get this seal out. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to flip it over and see if I can get inside here with something and uh, drive it this way. All right, I flipped it over, and I just took this little, little bit of a bend, and I got it in that lip, and I drove it out. And as soon as it gets off its sealing surface there's a step there it drops right out and it lets that lets that uh cone obviously come out as well so now we'll flip that back up and check that seal out all right guys this i uh, suspected there's nothing wrong with the seal uh there is now because i messed it up taking it out but uh i don't know if you can see this number here it's like a n o k a b 3253 e so I'm going to go to my my Agco dealer, see if they can get this. I, I assume they can. It, it seems like it's pretty well available online and everything, so I'm surely they can get it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not messing with any bearings. All these bearings look really good. I know what I need now. We've got this seal. I need that seal. I need this O-ring. I need this o-ring and i haven't really inspected it but i'm probably going to get the o-ring off of the rear cover i'll probably get that o-ring new oh also the cap i'm really not sure exactly what's going on here to be completely honest with you i really don't understand how that happens but it happened one way or another i've gone as far as i can go until I have my parts to put it back together. Uh, I'm also gonna get the gasket that goes for this entire unit to there. Uh, you could probably reuse the gasket depending on what kind of shape it's in. Mine's broken into a couple pieces. All right, that's it for now. We're gonna go to that birthday party. I'm gonna get cleaned up and uh, this stuff will sit here until I get my parts and then I'll, I'll make sure everything's cleaned up and, and all that good stuff. We'll go back together and Hopefully, we won't have any drips on the rear of this tractor when I get done with this. Hopefully. Thanks so much for watching. This is the end of this video. 
Um, um, the next video coming out will be um, the installation of the unit and putting all new seals and whatever else I put in there. It's something right up here, somewhere up here for you guys to click. Uh, that'll take you to that video. Um, if you're watching this right after I've uploaded it, that link won't be there because I won't have that video edited and uploaded yet. I'll also have it down in the description as well. And I will also try to have a link to Chris Lozzi, that Oliver guy's channel. Um, he's got all kinds of Oliver stuff on there. Uh, any questions on Oliver stuff, he is the guy. So, again, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. And I'll see you when we go back to Gatherlet. God bless you. God bless America. Brandon County Forge out.